As hospitals experience a spike in people being treated for respiratory illnesses, a leading GP is warning that influenza should not be underestimated. Winter illnesses are currently spreading throughout the country, with ESR data showing that Auckland hospitals has seen a, their biggest spike in admissions caused by severe acute respiratory illness in a single week since 2015. Now, there have also been reports, sadly, of several deaths of people who have died suddenly from illnesses such as influenza. Most recently, Wellington nurse Maria Leonard, uh, whose husband remains in ICU. The chairman of General Practice New Zealand is Dr Brian Betty, and he joins me now. Brian, good to have you back on the show. Oh, really nice to be here, Leah. Now, look, there's two reasons. Uh, first is, obviously, I want to, um, you know, get your expertise on what feels like a particularly rough winter. And secondly, uh, this is week four of me uh, getting over, I think, pneumonia or influenza right. at least. Mm. And I just mm. wanted a, uh, um, a, a free free chat to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> yeah, I thought I can't get in with my doctor, so I thought I'd have a chat yeah, to you instead. Yeah, right. we'll sort <laughs> all, all right, no, for, we'll sort this out. You tell me later after yeah. the end of the questions yeah. what I should yeah. be doing. No, but look, firstly, Brian, look, explain the difference yeah. between influenza, which is the flu, correct, and sure. yeah. and the common cold. What do people get confused about? Yeah, look, look. the first thing I'd have to say is the influenza, often what I get is patients coming in to see me and say, oh, look, it's just the flu. You know, I don't need a flu vaccination this year because it's just the flu. Look, the flu is, is very severe. If you get a dose of the flu and it's a severe dose of the flu, you'll never, ever want it again. So mm -hmm. there are some, some differences between influenza and the common cold of, or, or colds that we get. So often influenza is very rapidly onset. So what, what we tend to see is in the morning someone will be okay, in the afternoon will hit them like a truck. They'll right. get generalised muscle ache, headache, dry cough, maybe a sore throat, and it happens very quickly and they start to feel awful very, very quickly. What you see with colds is it's often just very gradual bit of a sniffle starts to come on, maybe a bit of a sore throat. Over a day or two, they gradually get worse and you get this cluster of symptoms we associate with the cold that's quite slow onset. So that that, that speed of onset is a real defining feature of influenza. It often happens right. very quickly. Okay, yeah. good to know. At that point, Brian, if, if it does come on quickly, I think a lot of people kind of ride it out and everyone's like, oh, just, you know, stay sure. in bed. Yeah. When do you yeah. know that you should, you know, go to the doctor? Yeah, look, really good question. So, look, for the majority of, uh, of, of upper respiratory tract infections, as we call them, or the influenza, look, you, you'll quite safely manage them at home. And that's with the, the biggest thing is to stay home so you don't go out and spread it because, yeah. you know, you go to work and suddenly everyone's got the influenza. Um, but you stay at home, rest, plenty of fluids, things like paracetamol or brufen for the temperature and the sore throat and the headache and the muscle ache. And generally time, it'll gradually get better. But fluids are really, really important to keep the fluids going down. Mm. I suppose where we start to get really concerned is if there's a very, very severe headache that isn't, isn't responding to paracetamol or ibuprofen. Oh. If you're finding you, you, you can't keep down fluids or you're not drinking enough and you're starting to get a bit dehydrated, that's that's really concerning. Um, or with, with and that's particularly with children. So if they stop drinking, mm. always seek medical advice, either through Healthline or ringing your medical centre or going to the after hours. That's really, really important to note. Um, and and or if the symptoms are getting very severe and you know, they can sometimes be associated with vomiting and diarrhea as well, you're not keeping down fluids, mm. things are getting worse. The, the, those are sort of the things you you need to watch out for, but for the majority of people, as I said, look, you'll you'll have a headache, you you you'll have muscle ache, you'll have a bit of a temp, you'll have a temperature, you'll feel a bit grotty, but with paracetamol and brufen, you'll be able to get through it and just manage it at home. So you mentioned younger, you know, young kids, and I can imagine um, older people too. It hits them harder. We've lost sure. a few. Yeah, it does. Um, yes. yeah. And they're, you know, they were in their eighties. We had a few deaths, um, and I don't think people realise, uh, Brian, uh, worldwide. You know how many do die from influenza. You know, it's actually it's a it's a mm. big killer. 
Um, look, look at it. Yeah, look, at, there was a study done by the University of Otago a few years ago, and, and people who die, with, about 500 people a year die with yeah. influenza in this country. And, and you're mm. right, it's, it's mainly the elderly. Yeah. Very young can get affected. But, but actually with it, the thing to note is that younger people who are otherwise fit and well can can get very, very unwell with it. And, and you just mentioned that tra- tragic case in Wellington. Yeah. It, it, it is a bit of a thing to take note of, that it can affect anyone at any age and it can be very, very severe sometimes. So, yeah, it it, it is a severe illness. 